Writing proof. Ano nga ba ito? Yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon dito sa ating matsayang talakayan. Kaya, stay tuned! Hello, Grade 8 learners! For today's video, we will discuss writing proof. With the learning competency, writes a proof both direct and indirect. Ano nga ba ang proof na tinatawag natin? A proof is a logical argument in which each statement you make is supported or justified by given information, definitions, axioms, postulates, theorems, and previously proven statements. Meaning, na ang magiging evidences natin is we have the information, then meron din tayong definitions, uh, pwede rin natin gamitin ang axioms, postulates, theorems, and previously proven statements. So, in writing a proof, meron tayong tinatawag na direct proof. Ano naman ito? A direct proof is a way of showing the truth or the falsehood of a given statement. This is by straightforward combination of established facts, usually axioms and theorems. When writing a proof, it is important to justify each logical step with a reason. Pwede natin gamitin ang symbols and abbreviations, but they must be clear enough so anyone who reads your proof will understand them. So if meron tayong hypothesis, then this hypothesis can be proven by definitions, postulates, properties, and theorems for us to have the conclusion. Ano naman ang postulate na sinasabi natin? So, postulate is a statement that is accepted without proof. Meaning, hindi na natin kailangan ng evidences para or bago natin tanggapin o gamitin ang tinatawag natin na postulate o mga statement that is under postulate. Halimbawa ng postulate, we have the segment addition postulate. Paano naman ito? So, for any segment, if the measure of the whole is equal to the sum of the measures of its non-overlapping parts. Okay, paano yon? So, let's have our example. Kung meron tayong segment AC at meron tayong point B doon sa segment AC. So, para maging uh, segment addition postulate, so ang segment AC ngayon ay equal sa AB, yung part na yon plus yung BC. So, when we combine AB and BC, that is equivalent to AC. At yon yung tinatawag natin na segment addition postulate. So, kung meron tayong measurement na AB, which is 4, and BC, which is 10. So, the measurement of AC is equal now to 14 centimeters based on the segment addition postulate. Another is, meron din tayong tinatawag na angle addition postulate. So, for any angle, if the measure of the whole is equal to the sum of the measures of its non-overlapping parts. So, let's say we have this angle. So, meron tayong angle BAD, meron angle BAC, and angle CAD. So, when we combine the measurement of angle BAD, C and angle CAD that is equivalent to the measure of the angle BAD. That is how we describe or illustrate the angle addition postulate. Ano naman ang theorem? Theorem is a statement accepted after it is proved deductively. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan mo nang mapatunayan that the theorem is true bago natin maaaring gamitin in writing a proof. 
Example, linear pair theorem. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So let's have our illustration. In the illustration, we have angle APC and angle APD, which are adjacent. Adjacent because meron silang common side, which is side AP. And the two other sides forms a straight line. And we know that the straight line measures 180 degrees. So, let's say APC is 60 and angle, angle APD is 120, then their sum is 180 degrees. So, they are supplementary. Another is right angle congruence theorem. So, all right angles are congruent. So, let's say we have our hypothesis. Angle A and angle B are right angles. So, in the conclusion, if these two angles are right angles, then angle A and angle B are congruent. Now, in writing proof, the properties of equality and congruence are also used as basis for reasoning. Addition property of equality. For all real numbers, A, B, and C, if A is equal to B, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. Example, If x minus 3 is equal to 6, then x is equal to 9. So, paano nangyari yon? We just have to add 3 on both sides of the equation. So, this is our solution. x minus 3 plus 3 is equal to x plus 3. So, if we have here negative 3 and 3, so this is equivalent to 0, then cancel out. So, meron tayong naiwan na x. And then, 6 plus 3 is equal to 9. So, that's why we have our conclusion, x is equal to 9. Next is subtraction property of equality. For all real numbers, a, b, and c, if a is equal to b, then a minus c is equal to b minus c. For example, if x plus 6 is equal to 10, then x is equal to 4. So, how did we come up with our conclusion x is equal to 4? So, ang ginawa lang natin, nag-subtract lang tayo ng 6 on both sides of the equation. So, when we subtract 6, we have here positive 6 and negative 6. So, this will be equivalent to 0. So, matatanggal ito. Then, 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. That's why we have here x is equal to 4. Multiplication property of equality. If a is equal to b, then ac is equal to bc. Example, if x over 5 is equal to 4, then x is equal to 20. So, ang gagawin lang natin dyan is to Multiply both sides of the equation by 5. So, kapag nag-multiply tayo ng 5 dito, we have here, cancel out ang 5, then 4 times 5 is 20. So, x now is equal to 20. That's why we have x equals 20 as our conclusion. Next, division property of equality. If a is equal to b, then a over c is equal to b over c. And take note that c must not be equal to 0. Because in case that c is equivalent to 0, magiging undefined yung ating equation. Example, if 5x is equal to 15, then x is equal to 3. So, how did we come up with our conclusion? x is equal to 3. Yes, correct. We just have to divide both sides of the equation by 5. Okay, so makakansal ang 5 dito. Then, 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. That's why x is equal to 3. 
substitution property of equality. If A is equal to B, then either A or B may be substituted into any algebraic expression or equation for the other. So halimbawa, if meron tayong x minus y is equal to 2 and ang value ng y is equal to 4, then the conclusion may will be x equals 6. So paano nangyari yun? Tingnan natin yung solution. If x minus y is equal to 2 at ang value ng y ay 4, so ang gagawin lang natin, papalitan natin ng 4 yung variable y. Then, apply natin dito yung addition property of equality na kung saan mag add tayo ng 4 on both sides of the equation to get the value of x which is equivalent to 6. Ayan o. So, pag pinag-combine natin yung negative 4 and positive 4, that is equivalent to 0. So, matatanggal yan. Then, 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. That's why we have here, x is equal to 6. Next is what we call the distributive property of equality. So, if meron tayong A multiplied by B plus C, that is equivalent to AB plus AC. So, example, if we have 5 times M plus N, then it is equivalent to 5M plus 5N. So, ano lang ang ginawa natin doon? We just simply multiply 5 in each term of the expression. Next is what we call the reflexive property. So, in reflexive property, anything is equal to itself. Parang kung baga kung titingin ka sa salamin, ang makikita mo natural ay ang sarili mo. Okay? So, in mathematics, let's have our example. AB is congruent to AB. A segment is congruent to itself. So, pwede rin tayong angle is congruent to an angle. Okay, limbawa, angle A is equal to angle A or congruent to angle A. Next is symmetric property. So, any equation can be reversed. Okay? So, pwede natin pagbalik na rin. Halimbawa, if angle A is congruent to angle B, so sa conclusion natin, babalik na lang natin. Then, angle B is congruent to angle A. Transitive property. For all real numbers, A, B, and C, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Since we have A and C are both equal to B, then in our conclusion, A and C are equal. Example, if angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay, since angle A and C are both congruent to angle B, that's why they are congruent. Now, so let's have justify this statement by giving the property use. Number one, if Tx is equal to Bk, then Bk is equal to Tx. What do you think is the property being illustrated? Correct, it is symmetric property. How about number 2? If 8 times m plus n, that is equal to 8m plus 8n. The correct answer is, yes, you're right, that is a distributive property. Another we have, if ct is equal to 12, and pr plus ct is equal to 20, then pr plus 12 is equal to 20. So that is correct substitution property. Okay, so paano yun? We just substituted 12 to CT. That's why we have here PR plus 12 is equal to 20. And then number 4. Measure of angle HIT is equal to the measure of angle or angle HIT. So the answer is Yes, that is a reflexive property. Then, the last but not the least, we have if angle S is congruent to angle P, 
and angle B is congruent to angle S. So, what the conclusion is, angle P is congruent to angle B. And that shows what property? Correct. That is under transitive property. Now, definitions are also used in uh, giving reasons to the statements. Example, definition of a midpoint. So, a midpoint of a line segment is the halfway point. When we say halfway, nandun mismo siya sa pagitan. Okay? It is in the middle. Or, the point equidistant from the end points. So, let's have our illustration. Yan. Ibig sabihin, if R is the midpoint, then QR is, will, is equal to RS. And QR is equal to 1 half ng QS at yung RS ay 1 half din ng QS. Another is we have what we call congruent segments. These are simply line segments that are equal in length. Congruent means equal. Example, we have AB and CD. So, since they are equal in length, then AB is congruent to CD. And this symbol is what we call the congruent symbol. So, in the segment, kapag dilagyan natin ng mark na ganito, meaning that these segments have the same measure or they are equal since parehas sila ng mark na nilagay. Then, how about complementary angles? Complementary angles are two angles whose measures have the sum of 90 degrees. So, let's say we have here a right angle which measures 90 degrees and then we have 25 degrees and 65 degrees when we get the sum that is equivalent to 90 degrees. So, they are what we call complementary angles. We also have supplementary angles. Ano naman ito? So, ang sum naman nila ng dalawang angles natin ay 180 degrees. Halimbawa, First angle is 100 and the second angle is 80. So their sum is equivalent to 180 degrees. That's why they are called supplementary angles. Now, ang lahat ng theorem, postulates, properties, and definitions that we discuss can be used as reasons for us to write a proof. And proof can be written in different ways. The first one, we have the paragraph form or what we call the informal proof. So the paragraph or informal proof is the type of proof where you write a paragraph to explain why a conjecture for a given situation is true. So in writing a proof using a paragraph form, it is just like writing an essay wherein in the paragraph you are explaining uh, the conjecture for the given situation. So let's say given angle LOE and angle EOV are complementary. So we are going to prove that LO is perpendicular to OV. So remember this symbol perpendicular. Now, let us use paragraph form to prove that LO is perpendicular to OV. Since angle LOE and angle EOV are complementary, then blank is equal to 90 degrees by definition of complementary angles. So what do you think is the statement? Correct. So the measure of angle LOE plus the measure of angle EOV is equal to 90 degrees. And that is under the definition of complementary angles. So, 
the measure of angle LOE plus the measure of angle EOV is now equal to the measure of angle LOV by angle addition postulate. And then, LOV is now equivalent to 90 degrees and that is by transitive property of equality. So, what can you say? LOV is a right angle by definition of right angles and therefore, LOV is perpendicular to OV by definition of perpendicularity. Okay, so that is how we write proof using a paragraph form. Now, another form is what we call the two-column proof or the formal proof. Since this is the formal proof, ito yung palagi natin ginagamit every time that we have to write a proof. So in two-column proof, you list the steps of the proof in the left column. You write the matching reason for each step in the right column. So before you start writing a proof, you should plan out your logic. Sometimes you will begin with a plan for a more challenging proof. So this plan will detail the major steps of the proof for you okay so example you have to complete the column okay so fill in the blanks to complete the two column proof so kaya two column proof on the first column these are the statements and second column are the results okay so we always begin with the given so ano ba ang given natin dyan? given is segment xy Okay, and ano yung kukug natin? XY is congruent to itself. So, XY and the reason is given. Now, XY is equal to XY. What do you think is the reason? Okay, so that is equivalent to itself. That is reflexive property of equality. So, we can now write XY is congruent to XY. And that is under the definition of congruent segments. Now, another example of a two-column proof. Given PQ is equal to ST. Q is the midpoint of PR and T is the midpoint of SU. Okay? So, let's have another example for a two-column proof. Ang gagawin lang natin dito is to write the reason for us to justify the following statements. So, given PQ is equal to ST, Q is the midpoint of PR, and T is the midpoint of SU. Okay, we usually started at the given. So, kaya ang first statement natin, we have there Q is the midpoint of PR and T is the midpoint of SU. And that is from the given. Okay, so let's move on with statement number two. Since sabi natin sa statement number one, Q is the midpoint of PR. Ang Q ay nasa pagitan ng PR. From the definition of midpoint, when we have a midpoint, mahati yung segment sa dalawang congruent parts. Kaya, PQ will be congruent to QR. Okay, then meron din tayo dito, T is the midpoint of SU. Kung ang T ay midpoint, T is equidistant to point S and U. And the divide yung SU into two congruent parts. Kaya, ST is congruent to TU. Okay, so anong reason doon? That is from the definition of a midpoint. Now, if these segments are congruent, of course, they will be equal. Kaya yun ang statement number 3 natin. At yan ay definition of congruent segments. So, for statement number 4, PQ plus QR is equal to PR. Ito yun, PQ plus QR is equal to PR. Okay, and sa kabila, ST plus TU is equal to SU. So, anong postulate ang ginamit doon? Yes, you're right. That is under segment addition postulate. Now, 
Paano naman nangyari ang statement number 5? Okay, so we will use statement 3 and 4. We will substitute the value of uh, PQ or QR doon sa statement 4, the value of ST or TU doon sa statement number 4. Okay, so from PQ plus QR is equal to PR and ST plus TU is equal to SU. So papalitan lang natin yung QR. Ano ipapalit natin? Ito ay QR. So papalitan natin ng PQ. That's why meron tayong PQ dito. Okay? So sa ST naman, papalitan natin ng TU. Since ST is equal to TU. Okay? So when we combine this, magkakaroon tayo ng PQ plus PQ is 2PQ. So 2PQ is equal to PR. Then TU plus TU is equal to 2TU. That's why we have 2PQ equals PR and 2TU equals SU. Okay, so anong ginamit natin doon o anong reason ang ilalagay natin? Okay, since nag-substitute tayo, of course, that is from substitution property. Okay, next is a statement we have PQ equals ST. Saan naman galing yan? Yun, galing siya sa given. Now, saan naman nang galing yung statement number 6? PQ is equal to ST. Okay, yun, no, makikita natin dun. PQ equals ST and that is our given. That's why ang reason natin dun ay given. Okay, now, tingnan natin yung statement number 7. Sa statement number 7, paano nangyari that we have 2PQ equals 2TU? Okay. So, we will have if PQ is equal to ST, eto yun sa statement number 6, and TU is equal to uh, ST or ST is equal to TU, galing yan sa statement number 3, then PQ is equal to TU. So, paano tayo nagkaroon ng conclusion na ganito? Ayan, no? Since PQ and TU are both equal to ST. Okay, so anong property na yon? That is under transitive property. Correct. Okay, pero hindi pa natatapos dyan kasi nga, ang hinahanap natin ay 2PQ equals 2TU. E yun, isang PQ lang at isang TU. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin? we will apply multiplication property of equality. So, we will multiply 2 to both sides of the equation. So, if PQ is equal to TU, then 2PQ is equal to 2TU. So, ang ginamit natin ng mga properties doon, we have transitive property and multiplication property. Okay? Then next, we have substitution property. Paano naging substitution property? So, anong sinubstitute natin sa uh, anong sinubstitute natin para makuha ang PR at SU? Okay? So, 2PQ is equal to PR. Ito. Okay? And yung 2TU is equal to SU. So, we substitute statement number 5 and number 7. Okay? Since they are equal, now we can say that PR is congruent to SU. So, we have now the reason if two segments are equal, then they are congruent. Now, another, aside from paragraph form and two-column proof, we also have what we call the flowchart form. So, a flowchart form organizes a series of statements in logical order, so starting with the given statements. Each statement together with its justification is written in a box. A rows are used to show how each statement leads to another. It can make one's logic visible and help others to follow the reasoning. 
So let's have our example here. So in flowchart form, ang given natin dito RA is congruent to RE. So in the figure, we have RA congruent to RE. Then given CE is congruent to CA. CE congruent to CA. Okay. So sabi niya, we always start at the given. Okay? So sa unang statement natin, RA is congruent to RE, and that is the given. CE is congruent to CA, and that is also given. Now, so ano pa ang kulang dyan? Makikita natin that the last or the third side of the two triangles we have here, RC, is congruent to itself. Okay, so that's why RC is equal to RC and that is under reflexive property. Now, we have here side, side, side. That's why in statement number four, triangle RAC is congruent to triangle REC and that is from SSS congruence postulate. Now, since the two triangles are congruent, on the last statement, we now have angle E is congruent to angle A because they are the corresponding angles of congruent triangles. Okay, kasi nga sabi natin, corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent. The previous examples are all direct proof. Paano naman ang indirect proof? An indirect proof usually is paragraph form. The opposite of the statement to be proven is assumed true until the assumption leads to contradiction. Let's have our example. Given triangle BEL is isosceles triangle with vertex angle B. We are going to prove that angle B is congruent to angle L. Now, so we will assume that angle B is congruent to angle L. Given that triangle BEL is isosceles, therefore BE is congruent to BL because they are the legs of isosceles triangle. And by the definition of isosceles triangle, angle B is congruent to angle L because if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite these sides are congruent. So, the assumption is false and therefore, angle B is congruent to angle L. And now it's your turn. Get your paper and pencil or pen, then name the property postulate or theorem being illustrated. You can post this video to copy the given to write your answer on your paper. And that's for today, guys. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Again, this is Teacher Dali na nagsasabing, practice makes perfect. Thanks for watching! Thank you.